Darren Beatty's with us now. He is Revolver News founder and editor. He's also a former Duke University professor. Uh, and I can't thank you enough for just being a pit bull uh, with January 6th. You guys have done such great work on it, Darren. Thank you so much. And it's great to be back with you. Thank you. Um, so I saw this this report uh, came out the 21st. What, what day is it today? The 23rd? Yeah. So two days ago, undercover cop cutting fences on January 6th. New evidence intensifies suspicions surrounding key Fed surrection player. Um, tell the story of what you have. And you only have pictures and snapshots. Uh, you don't have the official video yet because that's being held by a court for some reason. But tell me what you have. Well, in fact, we do have video depicting this individual cutting fencing designated in the restricted area around the Capitol. So just to provide some context for this, there is a whole wide area around the Capitol that is usually perfectly fine to be on. It was designated a restricted zone just for January 6th, and it was demarcated by fencing. Now, what Revolver uncovered a long time ago in some of our earlier reporting is that there are a number of individuals very early on cutting the fencing methodically. And when I say very early on, I mean far before Trump was done speaking, before the crowd went over to the Capitol. These are people who, for whatever reason, were hanging around the Capitol when there was no real reason to be there. And furthermore, they were methodically, professionally, coolly cutting down the fencing that designates where the restricted zone is. And the effect of this was basically to create one of American history's largest legal booby traps, because later on, when the whole crowd went over to the Capitol, they were unwittingly walking into restricted zone for which they could be charged. And many people actually were charged. And this is an entirely separate story, but the Department of Justice actually used